Hey, hey, it's Kev from Blender Binge. In this video, we're going to go over the graph editor, which is really powerful when you start trying to animate things. Ready? Let's go. The first thing I want to do is have something to animate. So, I'll go ahead and create a UV sphere. And I'm going to, on the Y, I'll pull him back over here. Now, if you remember from the animation video, we go down here to set the channels that we want to animate. That tells us what we can and can't animate. So this gives us a whole menu. We click on the little keys. And if you want to key everything, I would say, you know, location, rotation, and scale. In this particular instance, I'm just going to go with location. All right. And I'm going to hit this keyframe little key button to keyframe it and that drops a yellow tick right here on the timeline. So now let's say I want to pull this over to here and I want to set a keyframe at another keyframe. Well I go down here and I click the keyframe I want and you see it snaps back. It snaps back because once I move this just telling Blender hey be here now. If there's nothing else snap back to here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to tell it which keyframe, okay, which second, which frame we want this ball to be over here. So I'll go say frame 48, all right, and you can see 48. You can just go in here and type 48 if you want. And now with the blue mark here, I pull this over and I hit this key button right here. Boom. Now I have a yellow tick mark on the timeline and it tells me I have zero and if I scrub, I just click and drag, I can scrub between here or I can hit play and you see that it just goes on that timeline. Now we have 250 frames here, that's, that's quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shorten up this so you can see it better. So I'm going to make, it says start one and end 250, I'm going to make the end be 48. So I'm going to just go in here where it says 250. I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to type in 48. Hit enter on the keyboard. So now it just shows us these keyframes. So if I middle mouse click and drag, I can bring that into the center. And if I use the mouse scroll wheel, that's the button in the middle of your mouse. Most of them have it now. I can scroll this out. And then I can also click inside here back so I can get the blue marker back in here. Okay, and if you don't want if you don't want this to be you don't want your mouse to be able to go past 48, okay, when you're clicking and dragging and making a big mess, okay, you can hit this lock button here. And that'll lock it. So now I can't see I'm dragging and it won't let me go past 48, okay, and it won't let me go past uh frame one. Okay, so that just kind of locks it into that zone. So it just You don't have to do that, but it makes it easier. So now I'm going to show you, when you hit play, you see the ball starts out slow, ramps up speed, and then slows down toward the end, right? I'll let you watch that here. It's like natural motion. Okay, something in motion takes a, takes a force. All right, the amount of force gets it up to speed, okay, it gives it inertia, and then an equal and opposite force acts on it to slow it down again until it stops. Okay, it's just Newton's laws of motion. All right, now Blender gives you this naturally. It's a natural motion. Anything that you watch move in the real world pretty much moves this way. But sometimes you don't want this. Sometimes for effect you want it to just move, you know, here to here in a straight line. It's called linear. So what, how do we make that happen? Well, we can sit here and play with this all day long and try to, you know, make it go really fast and set more keyframes until we get it to look the way we want it, but that's a pain. Luckily, 3D software gives us these awesome things called function curves. And they live in this little area down here. If you go and you click this area, we're going to change this grid. This is where our nodes usually show up. We're going to change this area to function curves. So we're going to change it to the graph editor. If we click on this little icon down here and we choose graph editor, we now have this, which is very confusing when you first start looking at it. 
but bear with me. It's, it's a lot easier and a lot simpler than, than it looks. What this is, is it's telling us this is our timeline. This is our distance. This is the curve that represents where our object is, what it's doing over time and over distance. So over here, this is our, our X line, which exists kind of right, right in the middle. Okay, that's zero. Zero is our line here. So we went negative X, or I mean negative Y, to here. So that's negative, I don't know, whatever this is. Negative six, okay? And then over here is positive six up here. I'm going to guess it's, it looks like six. All right. And what we can do now is, well, let's simplify this because we see these dots everywhere and all these lines and it's very confusing. So let's go and simplify this. If we go over here, it says location. Now remember, we chose just location down here. If we chose location, rotation, and scale, this would say location, rotation, and scale and give us all sorts of data here we don't need. So that's why I only chose location, just to simplify this for this video. So if we click this little arrow, we see X location, Y location, Z location. Well, we know we only moved it on the green, right? The Y, and you can see the Y, y direction here. So we're all concerned with Y. So we can click on this little I here, turn off Z, okay? And we can go here, turn off X. Boom. So that gets rid of these lines here that weren't doing anything for us. All right. If we had animated it on there, you would see other lines moving in here. But I'm just keeping it one direction for now to make it, make it easy for you guys to see. So these are just Bezier curves. Okay. If you're, if you're familiar with Photoshop, okay, when you draw out the pen tool, you get these little lines and you can move them. Okay. You can click on these. All right. By right clicking. And dragging and you can move these okay and that in turn moves your ball well why is the ball moving what, what does this line have to do with the ball well this line has everything to do with the ball because it's telling you where the ball is supposed to be at a certain time so when you manipulate this line you're manipulating where the ball is right you're telling it be here at here be here at here but you can see you have direct control over the animation, over where your thing is. So let's just say, you know, it was like this. So I'm going to drop it by just, just right-clicking again. Okay, and I'll scroll out just so you can see this better. Okay, so here's our little black dot here and a little black dot here. Those are our keyframes. These black dots are our little yellow tick marks. And these Bezier curves control how the thing moves. So you can see here it stays stays around 6 for a little while until it really ramps up speed over here and then it starts slowing down up here and going into the last keyframe. So you can see that as it goes you see it levels out so it slows down. But if I move this by clicking and dragging okay, you'll see now it's going to speed up and it's going to slam into the wall. Boom! Okay, if I hit enter, that drops it. You'll see it slows down and speeds up as it's going in. Boom. Boom. See it? Boom. Okay. So you have direct control. You can also have it start off really fast. Okay. Drop it. Well, I hit enter. When I have it where I want it, I just hit enter on the keyboard. Hit enter. Gone. So I can select this keyframe down here and say I want it to just start off really fast and then go into a slow, slow down at the end, right? So I can have it start off fast, boom, shoots out. This is kind of like, kind of like a projectile or, or a soccer ball kick, okay? You kick it, and boom, it goes really fast. And then as it approaches the end of the field, it slows down, right? So here, watch. Fast, slows down. Fast, slows down. See that? So when you go in here and you start playing with this, you'll, you'll see how these curves let you really adjust the motion. Another cool thing is, if you're in here and you hit A, okay, a couple of times on your keyboard, you'll select both keyframes, because I only have two keyframes in here. Remember, I have one keyframe at one, keyframe at 48, right? You can also go here where it says key at the bottom, and you have what's called interpolation mode. 
and you have easing type, which is automatic easing, ease in, ease out, okay? Interpolation mode lets you do a few different things here, okay? It gives you all these different, you know, mathematical, you know, strength curves, okay? Sinusoidal, quadratic, cubic, okay? You have dynamic effects like elastic and bounce and back, which will just kind of randomize it. Or you have constant, linear, and bezier. Right now we're on bezier. If I turn it to linear, you'll see it flattens out those curves. So now there's no slowing down. It just moves. Okay, think of this like a conveyor belt moving. There's, there's no beginning and end. It just goes. All right, starts off the same speed, ends the same speed. No slowing down, no easing in, no easing out. Okay, with those keyframes still selected, I didn't deselect them, so they're still selected. I'm going to go back to key, and I'm going to say interpolation mode, and I'm going to say constant. Now, constant has it hold off okay, at one keyframe until it hits the other, so it's going to snap. So watch this. All right, I'm going to frame zero, or frame one, hit play, and it's not going to move until it hits 48, and it snaps to 48. See that? And it's, it's looping, so it just snaps back. But you can see it snaps to 48. Okay. Others. Interpolation mode. Uh, let's try bounce. All right. Bounce gives it this kind of random motion. So you'll see here it's boing, 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 boing. Okay. That's kind of cool because it gives you, you know, it's this natural motion of this thing kind of hitting a wall and, and you know, bouncing back. Okay, the inertia, and then, you know, equal opposite force pushes it back, and then it just kind of settles with this, you know, inertia. This works better if it's actually falling down. All right, in the real world, this probably isn't going to happen. But if it's falling down, gravity will let that happen. Okay, so you have these different modes that let you do these really interesting things. Okay, so I did uh, bounce. Here's elastic, which is going to kind of wobble it. Don't want to play it backward. There you go. Okay, so now it's kind of snapping to the wall like a rubber band. <laughs> I gotta get better sound effects. Okay, here's um, we did bounce. Here's back where it's gonna swing out past past its point and then come back. Watch. See, it swings out past past its point here. Okay, the keyframes here. It goes above it, so it's swinging out past it and then coming back. So it just takes a little while to play with this and really understand how this works. So there's quite a bit of stuff that you can do with these. And the more you play with it, the more it'll make sense. When you start animating later on, you're going to be really happy that you played with this and you understand how this works. Because a lot of animation, character animation or vehicle animation or physics, okay, really really go in here and you're going to do a lot of work in this area with your animation. Once you set your keyframes, you're going to go in here and refine everything. All right. And one last thing I want to talk about is that you can move your keyframes too. So you can go in here and you can right click on the keyframe and you can drag it wherever you want. All right. If you want to make this this animation happen faster, I can drag it to say whatever this is, 18. All right. Let go and hit enter. Now you'll see it goes faster. Okay? And it plays the rest. So you can move keyframes around in here as well. Right? And you can also add keyframes by holding down control and clicking with the left mouse button and you can add more keyframes. And also you can delete more key you can delete keyframes by right clicking on a keyframe hitting the delete button on your keyboard and just saying delete keyframes delete keyframes so that's the that's the graph editor in a nutshell that's that's the very basics of it go in play with it if you need to watch this video a few times please by all means watch it a few times that's totally cool okay the uh, the questions in the in the comments are fine i'll do my best to answer you know any questions you have but go in and play and that's how you're really going to learn so if you got anything out of this video, please hit like, subscribe, tell your friends about it, put up a sign, I don't care, whatever, um, and uh, I'll just keep making more. Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye.